What's good, y'all? It's Taj Rocket, aka Mr. Highly Motivated, baby. Here to get you motivated, baby. And we out here at Ski Beach Park here in San Diego, California. And we here for Functional Fitness Fridays, episode number 38. And we're going to get your mind and body to integrate today. Because today, what we're talking about is the Frogger squad jump baby that's right you're gonna be hopping like a frog up and down and getting that body fat burned all around you know what i'm saying baby so i'm gonna hit you with the full-on option that i kind of just demoed there and i'm gonna hit you with the two other accompanying options that are great for all fitness levels it's gonna be a great way for you to activate your posture your core and get those legs under tension and to be burning and earning all right so option number one you're gonna be doing the frogger squat jump so with this one you want to take a sumo stance so the feet are wide Feet are definitely outside of the hips, and you are pointing the toes out at a 45. From there, roll your shoulders back to assert proper posture. You should feel a squeeze in between your scapula. Tighten your core by flipping your hips and driving your belly button in your spine. Keeping your upper back squeezed, you're then going to pull your hands in tight to your thighs. Reason being, this is going to keep you with that tense upper back, and it's keeping everything tight to the midline of the body. So as you jump up and down, you maintain that tight upper back and you keep that straight back as you're jumping up and down and maintain proper posture and spinal alignment with that upper back active hands tight toes out feet wide keeping the core active you're going to slowly come down as low as you can and then boom driving through the feet driving through the toes activating the quads the glutes the hammies the calves and getting as high as you can all while keeping your eyes and chest up so up and down Really trying to make sure you push those knees out. You don't want to see those knees starting to kind of have that valgus knee where it's caving in. You want to make sure we push the knees out. What's going to happen is you're going to feel it more on the outside of the glutes, maybe a little bit more around that piriformis. But the more that you push out those knees, the more you get the outside of those glutes, the more you protect those knees, and the easier it is to really turn those quads, those hammies, and those glutes on. Also, make sure when you squat, you are not falling forward. You want to make sure as you roll the shoulders back, you're also shifting your hips back. So. You want your hips shifted back so your weight is predominantly in your heels as you squat, but then you're driving off your toes every time that you pop up. You should really be flipping those toes down. It's almost like a gas pedal every single time, but with both your right and your left foot. Shoulders roll back. Once again, eyes up, chest up. Gas pedal. Driving those feet into the ground. Into the ground. Really, boom. Flipping them just like you got flippers with your toes in the flippers. You know what I'm saying? Now, making sure your core is tight. Upper back is up. Right, up and squeeze. Chest is up. Eyes are up. And you're still keeping your hands tight to the body. We don't want to end up with our hands here. Because what happens, we naturally are going to want to end up face towards the floor. What that does, that puts your lower back at real risk for injury. So, keeping everything elevated. Eyes up. Chest up the entire time. Now, if you're having a hard time with, let's say... As you drive up, your body's falling forward, your knees are kind of caving in, you notice every time you land, you're kind of losing form. Option number two, we're gonna remove the jump and replace it with a calf raise. So all the other predetermining factors are gonna stay the same. Toes out at a 45, eyes up, chest up, flip the hips, tighten the core, the hands are tight to the body, keeping the upper back nice and active, pushing the knees out, shift the hips back, gonna go all the way down, boom, up into a calf raise plant the heels that's one boom boom now notice I'm still tight I'm still tight to my body with my hands so every time I squat my butt's going back I'm sitting back like I'm in an invisible chair pushing my knees out boom feeling like a ball a ballerina you know what I'm saying cuz you wanna <laughs> but keep your hands tight to the body boom popping it up popping it up dropping it popping it and dropping it still keeping the upper back locked chest up core tight and everything is active. Now, if option number two is not for you and you're having a hard time just getting up on those toes and you're having a hard time firing those calves, ideally also we're gonna pause for one, by the way, on option number two, you're gonna go down, pause for one, and then go down. Down, pause for one, and then go down. Try to seamlessly, boom, 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 working as one big system of muscles instead of thinking about separating your body parts. But if option number two and the calf is, is not for you, we're gonna move on to option number three. It's just gonna be the frogger squat. So no longer frogger squat with the calf raise. We're just gonna go frogger squat. So same setup, shoulders roll back, eyes up, chest up, core tight. Toes out at a 45, push the knees out. Shifting the hips back, keeping everything active, going all the way down. Boom, big squeeze in the butt. So 
Boom, once again, keeping that chest, everything proud. You should be able to make eye contact the whole time, looking forward or wherever you're looking, just making sure you keep that squeeze. Also, if you find a pelvic tilt happening and you're going down, you're starting to really pop that butt, flip it and tighten it and tuck it. Really, really drive that belly in and that will help you squeeze the glutes a little bit more and find more of a straighter, straighter. I mean, your, your natural L curve in your spine is normal and it's to be expected, but just make sure you're not feeling any lower back pain or stiff and rigidness in that lower third of the spine. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? You'll be just fine. Now, biggest thing with this movement, our goal here, it is somewhat of a posture working, core activating, thigh and all encompassing leg exercise. But our goal with this movement is at the end of any workout, I'll say a leg day specifically, an earn and burn end of your leg day, 30 seconds on, 15 off, three rounds, you're doing three rounds out of three rounds. Now I love these, these, these metabolic conditioning straight up, turning you into a fat burner, just turning you into getting you breathless, starting to work that cardiovascular system, especially if you are maintaining that form and going up and down and just staying after 30 seconds on, boom. Boom, try to still continue to get height. If you get tired, you can just transition into that calf raise or just that regular squat, but still keeping upper back tight, hands tight to the body and that core activated, eyes up at all times. Now, once again, 30 on, 15 second break. Hands over the head, pull the uh, elbows back. If you wanna open up that chest cavity so you can uh, amplify the oxygen flow. And then up, 15, three, two, up. And then you're right back to it for another 30 seconds. Then you'll take a break. You'll notice around that second and third round, you really start to burn out, and then you'll get it one more time on that third round, really firing, ah, hampers firing, you know what I'm saying, baby? Watch it out with those three rounds of 30 on 15 off. Take a break for one minute. That's gonna be your intermittent break in between the big rounds of the small round. So 30 on 15 off, three times, take a one minute break, and then do that two more times of 30 on 15 off. So 30, 15, 30, 15, 30, one minute, and then do it again. 30, boom, whatever variation you prefer. 15, 30, 15, 30, one minute, and then one more time, hitting it with a 30, you know what I mean? Whatever variation you prefer, 15, 30, 15, and then you're done with this exercise routine at the end of any leg day. Ideally, that's how you're gonna attack this. Now, if you are needing something quick and efficient, this is a great exercise to throw in in the morning to turn you up and turn you on. You know what I'm saying? If you find yourself feeling lethargic, exhausted, depleted, and you need to get the heart rate up, and you wanna just get at least your blood flowing so you can start getting those positive thoughts in your brain and start thinking about the, the optimistic side of life. If you find yourself kinda of waking up on the wrong side of your bed, it's a great way to turn that body on and to get moving and groovy. You know what I'm saying? Now, our ultimate goal, once again, at the end of any leg day, three rounds of the three rounds. Now. Whatever you're doing, make sure you're listening to your body. Now, I wanna make sure that you keep the core tight, upper back active, flip the hips, toes wide, push the knees out, shift the hips back. Those are the main points of this movement, all right? So here we go, I'm gonna hit you with that Frogger squat jump. Woo, Functional Fitness Friday, episode number 38. I'm gonna hit you one more time, real quick, and then we gonna get out and light it up like a fire stick. You know what I'm saying, baby? So, option number one, feet wide, shoulders roll back, Eyes up, chest up, flip the hips, tighten the core, push the knees out, shift the hips back, hands tight to the body to keep that proper posture. You're going down and you're doing that frogger squat jump, really making sure that your eyes and chest always stay elevated and you're always getting to it. Making sure, regardless of where you're pointing, you're not falling forward, but you're shifting that body back. Weight is in your heels as you go for the squat, but then you're flipping those toes down, just like you on a gas pedal, because it's all gas, no brakes, baby. Why wait? You can go get it right now. Option number two, if that jumping ain't for you, we're gonna go frogger squat to calf raise. So, shoulders roll back, squeezing those scapulas, keeping the upper back active, core tight, flip the hips, toes wide, point out at the, uh, with the toes at a 45, hands tight to the body, boom, pause for one, and then reset. Boom, boom, if you can, boom. Make it fluid, make it consistent, make it efficient. Try to avoid that pause with the heels on the ground. What are you doing? Shifting the hips back. Pause, down, pause, down, pause, down. Every single time. And if you have an hard time with that calf raise, and that one second pause, delete the calf raise altogether, and just get it in with the frogger squat. You know what I'm saying? Shoulders roll back, option number three. Ah, chest up, eyes up, core tight. Toes out at a 45, 
going down, boom, big booty squeeze at the top. Really thrust those hips forward so you get those glutes firing. Down, boom, still keeping the hands tight, still keeping the eyes up, ah, still keeping that chest up. Once again, our goal with this movement, everything's active in terms of the core, the upper back. You're making sure that your toes are out, knees are pushed out, activating the outside of the glutes, keeping those hips shifted back. And our goal is at the end of any leg day, earning and burning, 30 seconds on, 15 off, three rounds, take a one minute break in between those big rounds and the mini rounds. And you're doing three big rounds, nine total, 30 second intervals, all right? No matter where you're at, you can make progress today. Stop making excuses, start taking action. Once again, it's Functional Fitness Friday, episode number 38. Ah, if you join Taj Rocket on this journey, you'll be straight, baby. I'll see y'all next time, different location, same energetic motivation. Let's get up, get going, and get after. You know what I'm saying? I'll see y'all next time, baby. Holla. <laughs>